Hi, my name is Lee Brinton. I'm an electrical engineering instructor at Salt Lake Community College. We're going to continue our introduction to electrical and computer engineering by considering now the principle of superposition. Depending upon where you are in your, uh, in your math sequence, you may have already seen the principle of superposition as it applies to linear mathematical operators. For example, if L is a linear operator, and by that we mean it's something that performs operations that are linear in nature. I know that sounds a little bit circular, but let's just uh, follow me through on this and you'll see what I mean. If it's a linear operator, that means that if you operate on two different quantities, the sum of two different quantities, you'll get the same result as you would if you operated on each of them individually and then added the individual results together. For example, differentiation is a linear operator. We know that if you take the derivative with respect to time of uh, two different functions, u of t plus v of t, that's equal to the derivative with respect to time of the first one plus the derivative with respect to time of the second one. A little more concrete example. Let's say that u of t equals, uh, I'll say, e to the at, and v of t equals the sine of omega t. And we want to take the derivative of the sum of those two things. In other words, the derivative with respect to t of e to the at plus sine omega t. Because the because the, the uh, derivative is a linear operator, we know that that is simply equal to the derivative with respect to t of e to the at plus the derivative with respect to t of the sine of omega t, which is equal to a e to the at plus omega cosine of omega t. Thus, the principle of linearity, or the principle of superposition, rather, says that if we want to take the derivative of two things, the sum of two things, we can take the derivative of one thing and add to it the derivative of the other thing. When it comes to circuits and circuit analysis in linear circuits, there's a similar principle of superposition. In a circuit containing more than one independent source, more than one independent input to the circuit, the total response of the circuit can be found by combining the responses of the circuit to each independent source separately. What does that mean? Here we have a linear circuit consisting of two sources, a and, two, and it's important to understand it's independent sources. Two independent sources. Here we have a current source of 6 amps, and over here we have a voltage source of 45 volts. Superposition says that we can determine some quantity within the circuit, say, for example, the current flowing through this 10-ohm resistor. We can determine the total current resulting from both of these sources combined, by determining the current through this 10 ohm resistor due to the current source alone and the current through this 10 ohm resistor due to the voltage source alone. How do we then separate or how do we turn off one source and then the other? Well, sometimes this turning off is referred to as deactivating the source or turning the source to zero. In this first circuit here, we have just the current source. The voltage source has been turned to zero, which means that we've got a voltage source here of zero volts. So from this side of the circuit, this side of the source, to this side of the source, we increase zero volts. In other words, the voltage here is the same as the voltage there. Well, that is as though we had taken that voltage source and replaced it with a wire or a short circuit. So de to deactivate a voltage source, we replace it simply with 
of straight wire or a short circuit. On the other hand, when it comes to analyzing the circuit with just the voltage source in play, we need to deactivate the current source or turn it to zero. If we turn the current source to zero, that's saying that there are zero amps flowing through this branch. It's as though this branch were unplugged or open-circuited. And we replace that current source then with an open circuit. Let's go ahead now and calculate I, the total I, due to both of these two sources by calculating the current I1 due to the current source and the current I2 due to the voltage source and then combine those two. Alrighty, first of all, I1 can be calculated using a current divider. These two resistances are in series and we have the total current I coming in. I1 then is going to equal 6 amps times the 5 ohms divided by 5 plus 10. Well, 5 over 15 is 2 thirds, therefore 2 thirds of 6, I'm sorry, 5 over 15 is 1 third. 1 third of 6 is 2 amps. So, the component of I due to the independent current source is 2 amps. Now let's determine the current over here due to the voltage source. Well, with the current source open circuited, there is no current coming this way. And so any current that's flowing through the 10 ohm resistor will also be flowing through the 5 ohm resistor, and those two resistors are in series. Thus, we can say then that I2 is equal to, now you'll notice that I2 is referenced left to right, but this voltage source would be putting out current going right to left. So I2, there's going to be a minus sign here. I2 is equal to a negative 45 volts divided by the series combination of those two, 5 plus 10, which gives us 45 divided by 10 is 3 amps with a minus sign in front of it. So I2 then is equal to negative 3 amps. Now we can determine the total I. The total I is just equal to I1, the current due to the current source, plus I2, the current due to the voltage source, and that is equal to 2 amps minus 3 amps equals a minus 1 amp.